Welcome to the Animal House, everyone. Today we're gonna to take a look at the hydraulic top link that I chose for this tractor. It's a category one, and we're gonna talk about why I chose the things I did, how I hooked up the hydraulics, and what the benefits of a hydraulic top link are. So let's get started. So first of all, this is a category one. Uh, a top link for any three-point system is an important part of the, the system because it is gonna affect how things tilt. So if you're carrying a, a cultivator or something, if you're not level, you're gonna dig too much in the front and not enough in the back. If you're tipped backwards, it's gonna be vice versa. And if you're using this iMatch system, it's pretty difficult to hook up stuff when you don't have this stuff leveled right. And every tractor is a little bit different, but what I noticed is if you don't have the correct pin selection here, it's, it's actually kind of hard to keep it level. You can set it level and then you raise it, it changes. You lower it, it changes. I found that using the top hole in the category three tractor seems to be the right fit for me. If I let it about in the middle and I level it, if I go all the way down to the bottom, it barely goes, the bubble barely moves. So I find that to be a good fit, but if you don't have a good solid system for keeping this level, uh, you're gonna have a hard time hooking up your implements. And then the whole concept of the iMatch is kind of shot if you gotta fight hooking up your implements. It's supposed to make it easier. In the past, I've always tried to make pallets for my implements that would always keep them a solid height where, and keep them level for me and then move them around with the pallet forks. I still like the flexibility of using the pallet forks with uh, moving the implements around but it, it, I wanted a little bit more flexibility being able to hook up the implements when I'm out in the field. If I just wanna go quick on, quick off, sometimes uh, I set it down, it's on a stone, it's not perfect. I want a little more flexibility to adjust. So I'm gonna show you how that all helps us out here with this hydraulic top link. So let's take a look at what I chose here for this top link. Uh, I don't even know what the brand of the unit is. I just went by length. I was looking for the right length. I was looking for the right category. And then I wanted to make sure it had the double checks va check valves on it and that it was in stock and it could ship towards me. So uh, basically this is what I chose. What I figured out is from the base of my tractor to the iMatch system, I needed like 24 and a half inches. And so at 24 and a half, that was level. And then I needed to have a little bit of leeway to go push out so that I could tip down and then I needed some you know, few inches of space to go the other way too, to, um, to go smaller. So um, basically what I found is this unit is, I believe it's 21 at the shortest and it goes all the way to 31. So it's a 10 inch stretch. And that is perfect for what I need. I was a little nervous at first, then I got it hooked up, ran it a couple times. It's perfect for what I need. And so this is gonna be a double check valve. Um, I was real nervous about drift because I don't like to see if I've got the ballast box on the back here, I'm, I don't want that thing dr uh, drifting to the point where I come back one day and the whole thing is tipped back because the fluid slowly leaked through and, and drifted. So this is a double check valve. So far, it's been great. It's been a couple weeks. I've had it on with the ballast box and I checked it with a bubble level, uh, you know, every maybe once a week. It's been perfect. The thing hasn't budged at all. So uh, I got it with just the unit and then I had to figure out what my hydraulic setup would look like. I've got kind of a busy situation going on here with the backhoe Power Beyond kit. So I have to make sure whenever you do this stuff, if you are new to this, you, it is so easy to screw up when you don't think about certain things. So like if, if I put this on the other way and then I lifted the implement all the way up, I would have crushed the, half of this stuff right here because I would either wreck my, my new top link or I'd have wrecked some of my Power Beyond kit. So I hooked it up this way, and then I need my hoses to go like this. Um, some of this stuff is, you know, it's, it's simple, but it's tricky all at the same time. You go to Fleet Farm, you see hydraulic fittings, and yeah, they're not that complicated, except for the fact that there's like 75 connectors in a little three foot section. And you know, you gotta make sure everything fits right, doesn't leak. Uh, and so basically I, I went to a hydraulic professional I said, this is what I've got. These are British threads. I wanted to go to half inch standard for uh, what the John Deere uses. And then I went to 
the John Deere dealership and got the fittings that are perfect pairs for this tractor female setup uh, so that I've got no issues with leaking and so far everything's been working out real well. So let's show you this thing in action real quick. All right, we're gonna get the tractor started here. So uh, first of all, under normal conditions here, if I go all the way up with it, uh, I have clearance right here and I'm good. My hoses are right on as far as uh, you know not being kinked. If I go all the way down, uh, same thing. I've got plenty of room here. And then essentially uh, the way this works is I've just got a little trigger or a button on up on my uh, joystick for the loader. And if I push up, it goes that way and closes all the way and that gives me quite a tilt on the uh, iMatch setup. And then if I go down, it's gonna push me all the way out and gives me, uh, it actually gives me like six inches one way and four inches the other. I couldn't find a perfect five and five match, but uh, really I, I like it, I like it, I like it a lot. So uh, let's go hook up an implement and uh, we're just gonna give you a good example of why you might need something like this. So here I've got a six foot box blade, frontier box blade, and I just was messing around with the driveway a little bit, set it down, and uh, if you take a look, I don't have it on a pallet, it's kind of low, and if we look at this thing from the side, it's not straight, it's tipped, it's tipped forward. So uh, it's a little bit tricky sometimes to make that all work, whether it's going off with it or uh, going back on with it, when you don't have everything perfect. When you have that adjustment at your fingertips, like literally on your, with your thumb, it makes everything so much easier. So let's, let's hook this up real quick. All right, so I have my hydraulic all the way down right now, okay? What do you do? I'm not, oh, okay, well, this would work. I could push it up and it would go. But what if you couldn't do that, all right? So what I could do is I could lengthen this and that tips me in a little bit. That allows me to hook it and then back up a little bit and voila, that is a lot less work and trying to screw around with, on an uneven surface with a non-adjustable top link that's hydraulic version. So, and then you look at something like this with, uh, with a box blade. Let's get off and talk about this. Sometimes you get implements where you actually want to change it. If you got scare fires in here and you, and you tip this thing up like that, you're gonna dig really hard with your scare fires. And if you don't use the scare fires, you're gonna dig real hard with this back blade. And then if you move it like this, like let's say you're, you're plowing snow in the winter on a gravel driveway and you don't wanna dig with that, that uh, cutting edge, then you're gonna tip it the other way a little bit and then the cutting edge is gonna be lifted up and you're gonna skim across the surface and just take the light stuff and not you know, dig like crazy and have grass all, or snow or gravel all over the grass. So, um, all right, so that's basically the adjustable top link. I'm real excited. I recommend it out there to anybody who's, uh, you know, would see the value of it. Uh, if you liked the episode, go ahead and click. And if you haven't already, please subscribe. Otherwise, we'll see you on the next episode of Danimal's House.